When I think about leaving my legacy, I think about leaving music that's just timeless, you know, that can be played from generation to generation. I remember sitting back after I wrote everything, I just said to myself, I finally did it. I wanted to show my true colors with full-on production, which is, for me, everything that I want to accomplish as a producer. This record's called Cut the Rope. Originally, I didn't have this record with the vocal at all. I made this, this was the last record I made on the album, and it was like a late edition because it just came out really dope. So without the vocal, it's a good record, but it's not as special. And I knew it needed a vocal, and I remember showing this track to one of my boys, and I'm like, yo, I need a vocal on this. And he was actually the one that said Robert Owens, and it, it flipped a switch right in my head. I was like super happy he mentioned that. And so right away, I hit Robert on uh, Instagram, you know, linked the team with his team and we made it happen. And the vocals have a really nice meaning to it. So, I mean, I think the cut the rope means like you cut that relationship or you cut that tie with someone or that something. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. You see, I've always understood how to get back to reason and purpose. If I've ever lost my way. You could actually hear him flipping pages in this acapella, which is pretty cool. And I didn't edit that out. I thought it was, you know, you barely hear it anyway in the record, but I just thought that was pretty cool. got like this hypnotic sound to it like I think the way I went from major chords to minor chords and stuff like that it just gives this like little feel to it I made this on my laptop in it was in I think San Diego we were playing a show I was playing with Eric Maceoplex I had this groove going and I literally wrote it on the keyboard the magic keyboard in Logic which enables you to just use your computer keyboard to make parts and I had this groove going and I was like really inspired at the time because I was playing a few shows and it was really great. I pumped this out and then the minute Robert sent me back the tracks, it was probably about like maybe two weeks later, Maceo Plex was playing at Brooklyn Mirage when I finished this and I dropped him the, the WAV file and he played it live and it just went off. And that's when I knew I was like, I gotta have this record on my album. Like there's no way else to put this out um and it has that like underground feel plus up and vibrant feel which i really wanted another vocal record on the album so it, it's it's perfect <laughs> formerly Club Abyss, now it's called uh, Pure. It's an event space now. But um, this is pretty much where I got my start as a nightlife DJ, as a club DJ. So it's a little set up differently than it used to be. This room would be packed with at least a thousand kids on a, on a slower night, I would say. Like we would pack this shit out. I mean, this was like the true learning experience for me as a DJ. Like I was kind of spoiled as a kid just because I was playing for pack nights almost every month. It almost primed us for nightlife now. A few of my other DJ buddies, um, my buddy 4B, he has a career now too. And it's, it's crazy to see how we all started in, in the same building and we all kind of evolved together in certain, well, in different areas, you know. <laughs> 